Hello guys, in this video, I thought I'd discuss the cystic timer on the SAMD21 microcontroller. If we take a look at our SAMD21 device family data sheet, one thing you'll observe is that we have all our peripherals surrounded by this Cortex M0 processor core. So usually when a microcontroller manufacturer wants to design a device, they would use an existing, the existing Cortex M0 core designed by ARM Holdings Limited, and then they'll add all the external peripherals that will interface to this core. The cystic timer that we'll be discussing is on the Cortex M0 Plus core. If we look at the processor and architecture section of the datasheet, one of the things that is mentioned is the Cortex M0 Plus processor core. And like I mentioned before, when the manufacturer wants to design their ARM based device, they'll work on all their peripherals that interface to the core. However, the core itself will be designed by ARM. And when they're ordering the core to put into the device, there are certain options that they can select. So this table is a really nice table. It highlights features of the Cortex M0 Plus core. And then also things on the core will be things like your, um, your advanced high performance bus, interrupts, multipliers, um, all that single cycle IO port toggling feature that was um, put on the Cortex M0 to allow it to be competitive with this AI manipulation just as occurs in 8 and 16 bit devices, um, memory protection units and all that jazz. But one of the things you'll observe is the cystic timer and we look at the configurable option we'll see that it is present on the device. Now if you have worked with ARM architecture before you might find that strange because you know cystic is a timer that's usually present across multiple ARM device families. It's a timer that you can always um, look forward to having on a device regardless of the manufacturer. But for the ARM V6M architectures, Cystic is actually an optional timer. And in the ARM V7 architecture, it's um, a mandatory feature of that, um, that architecture core. All this talk about cystic. Well, what, what exactly is cystic? I mean, um, the sheet probably only mentions cystic probably three times in the entire data sheet. And if we look, we'll see that it said that the cystic timer is a 24 bit timer clocked by the CPU clock that extends the functionality of both the processor and the nested vector interrupt controller. And then it refers to the Cortex M0 Plus technical reference manual for details. So if you are new to really using our microcontrollers, this really doesn't say anything much. So in my video, what I really want to do is help you navigate the understanding of the cystic timer. So one of the major uses of the cystic timer is real-time operating systems. Now our TUSs always have a periodic time tick functionality and usually you use an onboard timer to support the specific RTOS that you're catering to. But within the different, having many different microcontroller manufacturers and devices, you can't always be sure that the timer that you designed your RTOS for will be a features available on the device. Yes, any modern device will include a timer but as per the specific implementation details of that timer may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and may even across device families. So um, what Cystic does is it allows uh, you know Artos designer or um, Artos users or anybody that's working at Artos to have you know a dedicated timer that they can be sure is available so it makes the Artos easy to port across different platforms. And the nice thing about Cystic is that it's closely integrated 
with the CPU core on ARM. Um, so it's a very dependable um, and consistent feature across Furion ARM devices. You know, and um, with the Cortex microcontroller software interface standard, it really makes it easier to depend on certain features on an ARM microcontroller core. You know, of course, there are uses uh, mentioned, um, you'll see mentioned by manufacturers relating to low power modes and um, sleep modes and and those type of things. But we aren't really going to that. We'll mainly focus on the cystic timer and, and a, as a general, um, from the general Cortex M0 perspective. And then we'll look at how we can access it um, on the software side. For the SAMD 21. Um, as you mentioned here, Cystic timer is a 24-bit timer. If you are accustomed to using timers and stuff like the Arduino or AVR platforms, PIC, and most other types of microcontrollers, you'll be accustomed to having a uh, overflow. So you'll have the timer, the timer up to until it reaches some specific value, then the timer overflow and then start back counting again and using a flag that's triggered on this overflow use it for your specific timer functionality. But something that's peculiar about the cystic timer is that the cystic timer actually counts down from an initial value and it counts down to zero. When it reaches zero, you have what is called an underflow, not an overflow, an underflow taking place. And after the underflow takes place in the next preceding clock cycle, what will happen is that a flag called count will be reloaded and it will start the initial value and start the whole counting on process again so you know if you really want to understand how this works one of the most important manuals in addition to the data sheet for the SAMD21 that you should really be looking at is this manual here which is the ARM V6M architecture reference manual so if we look in the ARM V6M architecture reference manual, um, one of the sections that you'll observe is uh, the cystic, um, under the system address map section, you see it mentioned the system timer or cystic. So, what it says here about the cystic is the ARM V6M supports an optional, see it's optional on the ARM V6M architecture. But on the ARM V6 V7M architecture, it's a mandatory timer. Cystic provides a simple 24-bit clear on write, decrementer and wrap on, wrap on zero counter with flexible control mechanism and system can kind of just blah blah blah. So basically it's you know what I mentioned before, in that the cystic timer is a 24-bit down counting timer. And it's flexible in that we can configure the initial load. Um, the shall load value when the timer starts and basically anything you expect with a modern timer. So I'm um, even mentioned here that it uses an artistic timer which has a programmable rate. They also talk about things like the, the con flag I was talking about, the varying uses of the timer. So they mention here that the timer consists of four registers, the control and status register which configures um, the cystic clock, enables the counter, enables the cystic interrupt and indicates the counter status. We have the counter reload value register, which provides drop value for the counter, counter current value register and a calibration register. So if you keep reading, um, one of the things you'll be seeing is this cyst underscore CVR. This is the cystic current value register. And what this current value register does is that it um, it will receive um, a clock signal from either the main clock or external clock. And if we look here, we see that the, one of the characteristics of this timer um, is that it reads or clears the current counter value. So this is an important um, timer. This is an important register, sorry, that we'll have to manipulate in order to use um, cystic we also have the um, cystic reload value register this 
reload value register is the register that is actually used to program the starting value of the cystic down counter. Um, one thing I want to mention here is that you'll see that um, it's mentioned here an optional clock source. And if we look if we look at the manual, we'll see that the reference clock for cystic, which is you know cystic is clock by reference clock, the reference clock could either be an external clock or the processor clock. On the SAM 21 we don't have that luxury cystic. On the SAM 21 it's powered by the CPU clock. Um, our global clock, the output of global clock zero, that physical clock CPU. This is the um, clock on the SAM 21 that powers cystic. We don't have the option of using an external reference clock. The cystic control and status register you know, will control um, variant parameters of the timer, things like enabling it and um, the stick interrupt, which um, when it's set to one, um, you know, an interrupt has occurred and when the count flag is set and when the clock source, um, the count flag and um, yeah, that, that's basically what we need to focus on concerning the cystic timer. As programmers, we don't really need to go into the full architecture of the um, of the timer itself. We just need to be able to know which ma which registers we need to we need to manipulate the control cystic. So now that we have a good idea of what cystic is, what it does, what the associated registers, let's look at the code to see how we utilize cystic. So the example that we are using for utilizing cystic. Is one that's actually um, provided by microchip technology that I modified for use with the SAM 21 G18 device, which is the device we'll be using throughout the series. So, what this example does is it uses um, the cystic interrupt to toggle an LED at a specific time interval. So, with any cystic timer, um, once the ticket is one, and when the Kong flag is set, it generates an interrupt. And we'll actually use that feature to generate our interrupt. So, as usual, we have our um, two main functions, our application initialization and our application run functions. So, within initialization, we set up our LED. Um, the LED is LED zero pin mass. This will be um, port A17. And what we really want to pay attention is in the app run function. So within the app run function, the first thing we must do before we do anything with the register is disable it. So using the cystic control, we disable cystic. Then we are using our 48 megahertz clock. So what we want to do is um, for the, to make this example easy and to make um, applications you know, we want to use the one, um, the one millisecond interrupts. So what we'll do is we'll set, you use cystic load and we'll load a total initial value of 47,999 to get the specific interrupt time period that we want to utilize. We'll also have to set the um, interrupt priority of cystic because since you're using the cystic interrupt mechanism, we need to specify the interrupt priority. In the last video, I covered interrupts, um, specifically the external interrupt controller, but there's a lot of general information there that you can use to really understand. Um, and of course, using the cystic value register, we reset the cystic counter value. The next thing we do is we enable cystic. We enable cystic exceptions, and um, well, we have the CPU clock. Um, the cystic exception, as you know, is um, the exception the system timer generates when it reaches zero. We then enable the cystic interrupt, and that's basically our app run function. The actual cystic handler, we want to toggle the LED at a 500 millisecond um, interval. And the way we configured our interrupt to work is that it will work in intervals of one millisecond interrupts. So what we'll do is 
we have this global this global variable here that will increment every time we have an interrupt and once it is um, we do our test function and once it is that it reaches a value of 500 which will be 500 milliseconds we'll actually toggle the LED output level so what we get is the LED flashing every time um, we reach our 500 millisecond time interval so the example is is really simple but it's um it's powerful and that it demonstrates you know how we can set up cystic through direct register manipulation and it also demonstrates how we can use cystic with an interrupt but mo as with most timers um majority of use cases will actually be for generating interrupts so i hope this um this video was helpful the series is on to Viat. We have I have other videos planned. Um, after this a series on using the peripherals on a device, I'll try to go into some you know some vanilla control um, control theory basics, and you know so you can really get the maximum um, maximum benefit of using the Samli Twenty One device. And I may even um, do some stuff with embedded machine learning and. Um, neural networks and I'm really open to do a lot of stuff really in relation to this device because it's a very powerful device low cost and easy to use so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video